Okay, everyone, welcome to uh, Metal Stamping and Wire Forming, Learn with Connor Manufacturing. Um, today we're going to take a quick overview of the stamping and slide forming uh, process. It's not intended to be a comprehensive uh, training. It's just intended to give you a snapshot of what the metal stamping process is, um, the type of equipment that is used, and the uh, guidelines that uh, we suggest for metal stamping. What you see in front of you here is uh, a, a machining uh, process making a 90 degree bracket. If you look at the upper left hand corner of the slide here you see a, a green block and the way that you would manufacture a 90 degree bracket from the machining process is you would begin by removing material illustrated here by the gray area. And you would remove some material and then you would proceed to remove more material until all the gray area has been removed and what you have left is a 90 degree bracket that has been produced by the machining process. Um, there's some features about the machining process that are unique to it that are different to the stamping process but uh, as you can see one of the uh, problems with this process is the amount of uh, material that is uh, wasted in creating this uh, bracket. Um, this is the same 90 degree bracket generated by the metal stamping process. What you see up here is a flat piece of metal and you see an upper and a lower form and what we're demonstrating here is the upper form making contact with the metal as it starts to bend. Over here in this view what we see is we see the upper form as it travels down and begins the, the forming process and you can see that the what was the flat piece of metal and now is beginning to show a little bit of a bending process. And what we see here is both the bottom and the upper and lower form, I'm sorry, uh, completely closed showing the bracket in the form position. And over here we see the bracket outside of all the forming process. What we typically use to uh, make uh, metal stampings are progressive dies. And a progressive dies consist of uh, many components that go up to making the geometry that's uh, necessary for the desired part. Um, what you see in front of you here is a picture of a progressive die. It's a, a die that is cutting a, a round part with some uh, blank in geometry uh, in the middle of it. And um, the open uh, view of this die shows all the different components that are uh, necessary in making a progressive die. Here's an example of some stamping parts. Uh, these are made from the uh, metal stamping process, usually using a punch press machine. Um, you can see here that there's a variation of uh, thicknesses of material, types of material, sizes of part. You see down here you have a relatively small part. Over here you have a relatively large part. Another large part, heavy gauge material. You can see this material is fairly thick. You can look down here and see this type of material is fairly thin. We have some uh, tubular uh, forming with perforated uh, holes. So you can see that the stamping process allows for a variety of different geometries for stamping parts. Typically what we use in, in uh, making metal stamping parts are uh, mechanical uh, stamping presses. And uh, there are two types of presses that are generally used. One is a gap frame press, uh, which you see here to the left. And uh, the other is what's called a straight side press press what you see to the right. Some differences between the presses is you'll see that the reason this is called a gap frame is because if you look at this shape it's like a C shape. It's got a gap and therefore the name of the press is called gap frame. If you look at this press over here it's called a straight side. It has no gap. It has columns. It has a column here and a column here. And so it's also referred to sometimes as the H frame press. The difference between the two presses is that this type of press here, the, the straight side press, is uh, uh, more accurate. It, it has better repeatability. Um, it's, uh, the foundation of the press itself is a little more robust. Um, the, the challenge here is that, uh, for Connor, is that we are challenged with uh, trying to do the best we can for our customer, not only in quality but also in price. And so the difference between the two presses is uh, it's also uh, the straight side is relatively more expensive than the gap frame. But wherever necessary, we use the uh, gap frame press, and wherever uh, necessary, we use the straight side press. And we let the part dictate which press we use. 
Here's a, a, a little uh, blow up of a, of a standard gap frame press. Uh, it shows you this is what referred to as a press frame, which is basically the construction of the press. Over here is a feeder, and what that does is it feeds the material into the press. Here we have the ram, and this is the uh, portion of the press that moves up and down. The bolster plate here is fixed. It doesn't move. It's like a table. It's solid. But this ram area, the, the motion is up and down, up and down, and right in this gap is where we would insert the die after it's built, and we would feed the material through here. And what this shows here is we also have some die protection, and that's a little sophisticated uh, method of us being able to protect uh, the tool from any damage. Um, what you're about to see right now is a video of the uh, press running with a die in it, and you'll be able to, to take note, um, look at the press frame, look at the feeder as it advances the material forward, look at this ram as it travels up and down, and you'll notice that the bottom bolster plate is fixed.